Beautiful. Okay, everybody. So I'm going to do a little introduction and then I'm going to do let Lucille do the big introduction. And I've known Lucille for many, many, many years. In fact, I think we both started in the industry pretty much at the same time. She, she'll tell you everything that she's done, but she really is coming to you today with experience pretty much like mine. And that is experience from all angles in our industry, except I've never been a salon owner. So actually, she's got far more experience than I do. And I've never been a spa manager. Lucille has, okay? She's also worked um, with a supplier on the product side, on the training side. She has worked in many, many different aspects of our industry. And I found her topic quite fascinating today, that when she proposed this topic to me, I was like, wow, this is really different. And she said in her email, look, I don't know what you think about the name. And I was like, I love it because it's really interesting, right? Because how often have we failed in our lives? Lots, right? And I'm so looking forward to learning and hearing about how do we turn that fail into a win because I'm besotted and totally uh, focused on positive language and being turning everything that could possibly be negative into a positive. So Lucille, I'm going to hand over to you. Everybody, it is 9 p.m. She does have a little baby. So I just want to say thank you so much for the time out of your family, for getting your baby down before you are chatting to us. And also, please just tell us all a little bit more about what you've done, um, what you did in South Africa and what you've done since you've left, and then take us into your very exciting topic. So I'm handing over to Lucille, everybody, on behalf of Spa Professionals Guild. Thank you, Marie. So thanks so much for having me. I feel so privileged. Um, you know, as a young beauty therapist back in the day, we were beauty therapists and now we're estheticians and all kinds of wonderful names. Um, and, you know, I used to really just look at Marisa up on the stage and go, oh my gosh, that lady has so much confidence. One day I want to be able to give back to the industry. And I am so grateful. And um, it's, it's really special to me that it's on your platform, Marisa. So thank you so much. Um, for having me and I hope to the audience here today that you'll take value from what I'm sharing with you and I want you to feel that we're sitting across a table having a cup of coffee and discussing things that are relevant to your um, business your circumstances and as we go through the presentation feel free to pop a question in the chat if there's time and opportunity I'll address them as we go because this is all about you getting value from the session it's not just about me delivering a message so uh, Marisa is very gracious when she talks about all my experience yes I have done a lot of diverse things um, I like to really fully understand everything I'm engaged in and a lot of today is about that it's about uh, critical thinking and critical thinking either comes naturally to one um, or it's something that you can learn. So um, I'm not going to talk too much about what I've done. I think the slides themselves will kind of show you like, you know, the way I've structured it. Uh, I am a critical thinker. And if there's too much detail, you're welcome to sort of throw that aside. And, you know, if there's not enough detail, please do ask questions. So did anyone want to say anything or ask anything before we start? Maybe, um, I know it's a very brave thing before we even get to know each other to ask this, but is there anyone here today that really feels like there's one area of their lives um, that they really want to improve? And you can just pop that in the chat. You can just say yes, no, maybe, whatever it is to you. And if there's one area in your life that you want to improve, whether it's in your business um, or whether it is, you know, maybe career progression, whatever it may be, just go ahead and pop that in the chat while I share my screen. Yeah, that sounds amazing, Lucille. Okay, so come everybody, now's not the time to be shy. And we all know this is our community and we're here to help each other. So let's hear from all of you. What is one area where you would like to improve? I'm going to write mine for you, Lucille, so you can check it out Thank in a minute. You. Awesome. Okay. 
Okay, so I won't be keeping my eye on the chat. I'll rely on Marisa to shout out the uh, questions to me as they come across. And um, so today's session is really covering how to fail and win. Because, you know, in life and business, we don't win all the time. And when that opportunity comes to evaluate a failure and really look into what it was uh, that you could have done better, that someone else on your team could have done better, it's important to have a certain set of skills. So we'll unpack failure and processes um, to convert that failure into a win. All right, so um, there's also an opportunity to do live case studies. So if you have any examples that you wanna run through, uh, we're here to help you through that as well. There are a couple of um, success factors and uh, please let me know if you can all see the slide clearly. Okay. There are a couple of success factors, great that um, these are called theories. And you will see in my bio, I've, I've recently taken on an MBA. And the reason for that is I really wanted to understand um, the theories behind business and where these things come from. So uh, this is taken from some of our lectures. And um, what it does is it identifies your leadership qualities. So the things that make an individual successful. And I'm not spending too much time on this because I feel like everybody knows, right? A successful person has knowledge of the business. They've got determination and drive and the desire to lead. You know, these are all familiar traits that we know. And um, these diagrams are available to you through Marisa if you, you know, want to study them in depth and really embrace them. But they're here tonight to and today to illustrate an idea to you. You'll see in the quadrant that I've got over there, the intelligence quadrant, there's IQ, EQ, and CQ. Have you ever heard of IQ, EQ, and CQ? Now, of course, you've heard of IQ, but do we all know about EQ and CQ? Not CQ. I know EQ. I don't know CQ. All right. So um, EQ is your emotional um, quotient. So that's the emotional intelligence per se. CQ is cultural intelligence. So that's an understanding of, you know, when you walk into an organization and you, you get a feel of the place, you can feel the culture of an organization, or you spend time with someone and you get their essence, that's their culture. So um, that's about an awareness of how those things impact our success in daily lives as well. Then motivation. The last time Marisa and I, I did an interview, we spoke about motivation. And these three topics, autonomy, competence, and relatedness, you'll recognize from her wonderful newsletters as well. And um, that sort of summarizes, you know, what motivation is and does. Um, so these are components that make up a successful organization. You've got to have a leader who obviously has all those qualities, um, the IQ, EQ, and CQ. Then, of course, you've got the uh, organizational qualities like the essence and the culture, um, you know, where you can see basic underlying assumptions. So if you walk into a business and you know that this business is all about personal development, professional development, um, they do reviews on their team, you'll make the assumption that this business is driven by excellence. And that is what we call a basic assumption about the business. Then when you look at espoused values, I'm going through this very quickly because this is just concept. This is not teaching, okay? So it's just so that you can get an idea of some of the aspects that create a quality um, business. So then we look at espoused values. These are the things that are the heart of your organization. They're often modeled after the, um, the owner or the entrepreneur or a specific structure that the, uh, the, the business owner has in mind. So um, these might be sort of core values that are unspoken even, um, maybe something like being competitive or rewarding your staff shows that there's a high inclination towards competitiveness. And then we look at the artifacts, which is the, the face of the business. So um, that would be walking into a spa and you have the woody, you know, the beautiful woody interiors, or you have the silver and glass fittings. So that's the aesthetics or the face of it. Okay. So um, these things all packaged together, including your leadership style. So what kind of um, leader is running the business or what kind of manager um, is running the business? What is their style? Is it transformational? In other words, do they like to bring about change? Are they adaptive? So they adapt to the team and the environments and the changing economies. Are they charismatic? They can inspire you and move you forward um, to new dimensions that you never knew existed about yourself um, or your capabilities. 
And are they ethical? And they can be all of these things or one of these things in less and more proportions. Then we look at a 90 day action plan. Every good business has an action plan. Am I right, Marisa? So every good business has an action plan and you break it down into smaller goals. We've all heard of smart goals. I won't bore you with that. They need to be specific, measurable. Um, they need to be on point and focused on that ultimate goal that you want to achieve and they need to be timely. So then we look at the plan and the ad hocracy and the market and the hierarchy of things. That is, um, you know, what is the culture again that you want in your organization? Are you known as the spa tribe? Like, do you hang out and have drinks after work? You know, that sort of thing. So you choose the personality of your business per se. And these things exist so that we can make an impact because if we don't, then somebody else will. And that's when you lose your clients or you lose team members, valuable team members, because people are drawn to what they appreciate. So it's really important to understand, I'm going to call these the um, business values that drive your success. Does that make sense to everybody? Awesome. All right. So the next thing is we move on to performance management and accountability. And we all do this in our businesses. We have to because it's how we track success. So there are different ways we can manage this. We can have um, employee performance metrics. We can manage by objectives where we set a specific goal. Like this week, we're going to sell um, body slimming packages because maybe summer's coming and we're focusing on you know, a specific machine. And this is great value for clients, great results for clients. And your target is to sell 10 of these packages in two weeks. So that's an objective that has been set for the team and in that same way we need to drive that with motivational factors we can then also look at a balanced scorecard which divides those different um, aspects of the business so culture finance people reputation so those different um, subject lines of the business that kind of are important to your business and unique to each business because not every business will look the same right you're not evaluating the same um, benchmarks for each business. They may have common ground, but maybe to one business, the relationship side of things is more important, or to another business, the feel is more important, like the culture and the atmosphere. So I'm um, using a balanced scorecard to evaluate things like that. You can use a rating system and then managing by objectives with a 360 degree feedback for management and for the business overall. That involves getting feedback from your clients and from your team and you know, from your suppliers. So um, you get a holistic view of someone's performance and also the, the unique benchmarks that the business has achieved, as you can see here, um, this example that I've used, you know, examples that the business has achieved those outcomes for the year. So we track our success. Why, why do we do that? We like to win. And there are good reasons for that. It feels good. It builds a positive reputation. It brings rewards. Um, it brings all those wonderful motivational factors to the forefront. It's a very empowering feeling to feel and um, embody that space of winning. And of course, it strengthens relationships. So we train, we train to win and we identify opportunities to build capacity. We set goals with timeframes. We have ongoing skills and leadership development. We appoint a coach and a mentor. And this is so important. Even coaches and mentors have coaches and mentors, the good ones. So um, yes, and we manage performance because it's important to individuals, to organizations and to the customers that we serve. So um, we also need to do regular self-evaluation. Now, so far, none of these things might be new to you. Um, this is just a handy little checklist that summarizes all the great qualities that make us win. So let's have a quick look. We have a clear vision. We start with the end in mind. What do we mean with starting with the end in mind? So if we're going to build a house, we have a plan drawn up for the blueprints and everything. Marisa will tell us all about spa renovations and construction and all the planning that goes into that. And you start with the end in mind. You've got this vision for this thing that you want to build. And it's the same for a business. Then you've got a plan and a strategy. How are you going to get there? You're clear on your core values. You're working with ethical suppliers. You're using, for example, in your spa, you're using products that um, meet those values. 
And you'll hear me talk about values throughout this presentation because they are so important. Um, you're welcome to take a photo of this page or screenshot this page. The presentation's available afterwards as well. So just kind of keep this as a checklist. Every now and again, maybe laminate it and every now and again, just check, um, you know, are we doing these things in the business? Because they should be happening. And right at the end of the list there, we need to look after ourselves. Self-care is a necessity. We need to have fun and enjoy what we're doing. Now, all of this is great, but you know, how we do things is so important. And if we don't know how to bring people through a fail to get them back to a winning spirit, we've all been there. Um, not every team who goes out to play, play a, a game of tennis comes back home victors, right? So um, they have to sort of sit with this loss sometimes. And how do you get people to feel re-motivated? And we'll take a deeper look at that. First, we need to understand why we dislike failure. And I'm just going to take a little break. I'm so sorry, I'm nursing a cough. I just don't want to cough through your presentation. Don't stress, don't stress. Thank, we you. Love Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so why do we dislike failure? It associates our out the outcome with our identity. And we believe that failure is undesirable. So because of that belief, I'm sorry, I'm just going to mute myself for a second. Okay, so maybe while Lucille is sorting out her cough, shame. I feel so bad for her. You can maybe all think about a failure that you've had in the past at some point and why you felt so terrible when you failed. I don't know if you've ever done that actually because sometimes analyzing a failure can give you all the tools that you need to turn that failure into a win. So we'll hear back from Lucille what she has to say but I want you to think and maybe write down what failure did you have in the past and why did you not like that feeling of failing in that specific failure? What did it make you feel like? Okay, so that, that's quite important. And if you want to share it in the chat box as well so that uh, you know, we can share it with each other, maybe maybe that's something interesting as well to have a look at what fails did you ever have and um, how did they make you feel come let's share that in the chat box everyone a sense of feeling unsuccessful from Dominique and I agree with the fear of failure being a violation of your core values. Therefore, we don't want to fail. Okay, that's interesting. It's scary. Okay. So I would have thought that perhaps a failure could be, you don't like having failed at something because you worried about damaging a relationship for example um, that's like when two partners in a spa business or a salon business get together and they fail at something their worry could be oh my goodness I'm going to ruin or damage a relationship with with my partner so Laura's just shared with us I failed in business and in marriage and whilst it was absolutely horrible and I suffered severe panic attacks. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. I lost ego and gained massive insight. And Anna says That's that failure, so yeah, so and Anna says failure is a major disappointment mm -hmm. to her. Okay. Okay, so there you Thank have a little you. insight. Pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> Back. All right. So why, why do we dislike failure? I, I often think it has a lot to do with you know, when, when you're in school, you're kind of taught, well, don't step outside the lines, don't fail, you've got to win, win, win. And we're so programmed that winning is the thing to do, that we think that failure is a bad thing. And 
as some of our commentators have pointed out there, failure can be so constructive. It can be so um, uplifting and, and rebuilding. So it almost rebuilds how you look at life and how you approach things. Um, it often feels like you're stuck when you're, when you're in failure and you're stuck in that moment. Um, it can create cloudy judgment. So um, do you know why that is? It's the cortisol. So when we're stressed and we feel like we're um, failing and we're stuck in this moment, Cortisol levels are high. Cortisol is that hormone in the in the body. I'm sure you've all heard of it. Um, and you know, it, you just don't think straight during that um, sort of panic season. Now, if we can calm the mind down and regain composure and sit down with this thing that we apparently failed at, we'll actually pick out so much value that will propel you forward. And that is what actually gives you the momentum at the end of the day. So as Marisa said, fear of damaging relationships. These are all beliefs that we hold on to. And it's not an exhaustive list. There's so many other fears. Fears come because we violate a core value. So there's something really exciting coming up in this presentation. And um, I'll get you through this real quick so we can do the activity together. But I want to have us feel liberated from whatever failure is holding us back, whether it's personal, business, um, or career driven, whatever it is, we're going to get rid of that today and put on our uh, winning face. So maintaining healthy relationships uh, means that we need to build rapport. Um, we have reciprocity and meaningful gestures. So reciprocity is a fancy word. It's just give and take. Um, we manage expectations. We have open, honest communication. And there needs to be an exchange of communication. It can't just be one sided adaptability, trust, and empathy. These are all things that, you know, make great relationships. And how we process the failure is obviously, you know, how we move towards the win, whether we do that with success and grace, or whether we stay stuck in a negative, resentful mindset. So all these things are values. And it's okay to miss the mark. We just need to keep going. We need to make each version a better one. No one gets it right the first time. Being accountable for your actions. And that's a big thing. So actually taking the failure and looking at it can feel scary in the beginning. Let's say you had a sales target for the month or you had to master a new treatment and you're just not quite there yet or whatever the scenario is in your life or business. And you look at this and you, you start developing this belief about yourself. Oh, I've let everyone down or I am a disappointment. And you internalize that and it becomes a self-belief. And that is where the danger is because we hold on to that identity. So we need to shake those identities and move forward and build our capacity to, um, you know, actually get through these tough times and develop healthy habits. Who's heard of epigenetics? You can just type in the chat if you've heard of the word epigenetics, it's actually about how our experiences change us on a cellular level. So Harvard have done studies where um, they actually find on your DNA, the little notches are almost in my mind. I imagine like a, um, like a walking cane with little notches on it. Okay. So they find these markers when people have experienced, uh, experienced periods of stress and this is ingrained in the DNA and they're linking it through studies. They're now starting to understand that this possibly links to disease and hereditary ailments. So it's very interesting. And it's, that's one of the other things that's so important to work through failure is forgiveness and to throw things down and move forward from, from that point. All right. So you're walking the dog, doing the laundry, and all of a sudden these memories come flooding back. And you kind of wonder, why do you feel stuck in that moment? Because you've worked through it all. Uh, you thought you'd forgiven everyone. The problem is, if we don't address the value that was, um, I'm calling it violated for a lack of better word, if you don't know what that value was that was violated, then it will continually come back and hold you back like a great big heavy weight. So we need to know what our success factors are. Does everyone have access at the moment to a pen and a piece of paper? I just want you to grab paper and a uh, pen and you'll see I'm my- I'm sure email. we all do. Great. Mine's ready. Thank you for putting up with my squeaky voice. <laughs> no, don't stress. Okay. We are all good. 
All right, so um, I want you to draw three circles, a great big circle, a medium circle, and a circle in the center. The center, as you can see, is yourself. So just draw an arrow as you see it there, self. The next one is family and friends. And then we've got business, work, and associates. So what we're going to do next is put an X in the circle that represents your greatest area of failure. So where do you feel you made the biggest mistake? If there's more than one, mark more than one. No dramas. Cue the spa music. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. I just need a second to think. Go. Think, think. Take your time, everyone. Okay, I'm done. I don't know about the rest of everyone. All right, how's everyone doing? So we're just marking with an X in the circle where we mm -hmm. feel that we've had yep. our biggest failures, for example. Yes, failure. Okay. Now I want you to close your eyes for a moment. Take okay. a deep breath in and out and just relax, close your eyes. And I want you to think about what are the perceived feelings, beliefs, or phrases that come to mind when you think about that failure. So when you, when you think about that thing that you wish you had done otherwise and you just can't seem to move on from that, what are the three things you believe about yourself now that are negative? So I am not liked, for example, I am not skilled, I am not useful, or I disappointed everyone. Whatever the belief is, don't let me put words in your mouth. I'm gonna shut up for a minute and have a good think. Must we write it down or just think it? You can write it down. Just three things. Okay. All right, everyone done? If you need another minute, just let us know in the chat. All good? Okay, so everyone there, all good? Okay, so we've written down these three perceived feelings, beliefs, or phrases. And the next thing I want you to do is turn that into a positive. So think about the opposite. I am not liked. What would the opposite of that be? It would be likability. I am not skilled will be to have skills and knowledge. I am not useful. Usefulness, value, purpose, meaning. You get the picture. So all good. Okay, great. Okay, so we must just write the positives next to ours, right? Yes. Okay. And guess what you've just discovered? Once you have those, these are your core values that you feel that you've violated by failing in that moment. And so the process starts with self-forgiveness and then thinking about who are the other people involved, if other people involved, and unpacking the situation. Was that helpful to someone? Hmm. Okay, so take your time thinking about the positive opposite mm. of that belief. Great. Okay. Kara Briro, I hope I'm pronouncing that well. And then somebody else was saying this is power. Thank you. Those are lovely comments. 
And um, I'm glad, you know, I always feel like if you can help one person, doesn't matter if you're speaking to 400 people, if there's one person that you can impact, amazing. And if each of you already, um, you know, silently knew this, then at least you've been reminded of it today. So identify the negative belief and change that with the opposite positive. Those are your core values. And now we're going to unpack that. All right, so lots of values, aren't there? So many values. All right, this does not have to be scary. I want you to look at just the left-hand side of the screen. So that's the section here with the first four columns. And then these are all the values, okay? So what you do is you look at that list for the next three minutes and you pick out 10 or 20. So just for the sake of the exercise now, go for it. Just pick out 10 or 20, maybe three or four in each column that really stand out to you. Speed reading time. Um, Lucille, while everybody's looking at this, I just want to let yeah. you know, I did this exercise um, as part of the WPO group that I belong to. Oh, wonderful. So yeah, and um, I mean, it took us, it took me quite a while to get my three. Um, but the interesting question that I have um, for everybody out there that they asked me that my answer was no, is do you know your three core values? And, right. and, and we nailed it. <laughs> no, but my answer was no, I don't know them. So, okay. So was, okay. You see, Francisco's just answered, no, I don't. So it's very yeah. interesting. We always look at the values of our business. The values yes. of a company, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but we yeah. never operate by what are our values. Core values. Because you see, when you align everything with your core values, you're going to move in a lane that's prosperous anyway. You're going to succeed and win anyway. You're going to be attracted to people with similar values that, you know, cherish you and you're going to you feed off each other's positive energy. So, um, and by that, use, yeah. Yeah, 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 you're making sense. Fran, use okay. the time now. Look at the words and, and take out 20 that stand out at you. So don't overanalyze. Just look at them yes. and write the ones that stand out and shout at you first, okay? And then you start, start with those, the 20 first. I did that the first time I looked at this. I overthought it because I'm a critical <laughs> thinker. I'm like, how must I choose 10? There's like 100. So just take the first column and literally use your subconscious. Just go, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, appreciation. That immediately stood out to me. Da, 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 da. Oh, cheerfulness. I like happy people. Okay, cool. I've got my first two. So just do it real quick. Don't overthink each one. Don't think why, how, who, what. Is the Zoom notification blocking the view for anyone? No. No, great. Not at all. No, I can see clearly. Fantastic. Um, How's everyone going? Can I get a thumbs up in the chat if you're managing to find your 10? It doesn't have to be 20. Thirteen. Uh, I've now got four today. Darn it. Let me just Great. see. Cool. Okay, so you want to have, thank you, uh, Karen and Someone called Zoom user. Thank you. Um, uh, Lena. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes. Dominique, 13. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. So once you've got at least 10, you now, if you've got 10 divided into two groups, if you've got 20 divided into four groups, look at those groups again, and you want to group the similar ones together. Does that make sense? 
So if you look at um, underneath where it says core values over here, I've got five categories and we've put um, the core values that kind of do the same thing together. Does that make sense? And then you pick one from each group and the, that would be your five core values. So if you were going to start a business, maybe it would be a business about mindfulness that makes a difference, focuses on well-being, brings happiness and freedom to people. Do you see the ones that are bold in my example? Yeah. Okay, so that's how you can use your core values to decide what the culture of your business is, okay, and what the, um, the essence of, of you is that you bring to a relationship. Okay, so the first step is choose 10 or 20. The next step is divided into however many groups you have, preferably groups of five and then pick one from each group and focus on those because the rest will flow from it. Is that helpful? Mm, 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 mm. Is everyone okay if I move on to the next slide? Is anybody still busy with us? Because we can stay here for a few minutes if you need to. There's no rush, no rush at all. Oh, see if you can break Just down. Wanna, I don't want to bore you. So um, if, you've, if you've done it or if you've got the concept, just let us know and we'll move on, okay? Meanwhile, um, if there are any questions, please pop them in the chat. Love to answer questions because it helps me understand what information you need. And Lucille, they, all of us are picking this from a personal perspective. So we are yes. picking our individual values, not our business's Correct. values. Okay? Yes. okay. Your individual values. And it might be interesting to you that your business values are the same. So there's nothing wrong. For example, I used to um, go, you know, um, maybe there's, I don't even know if it says profitability somewhere there. Um, let's pick one that's like a bit... Uh, maybe there's one that says making money, okay? I, I would go, well, that can't be a value. Of course, that can be a value. That's fine. That's a good value. So, um, yeah, just, you know, go with your gut and your intuition. Don't overthink it too much. Once you've got them, run with them. Just trust that. Seeing some okay. comments. Yeah, maybe everybody just okay. pop in the chat box when you're done. Like Anna said, now I'm done. Then we know. Cool. Thank you. Okay, it's done. Are we going to share them or not? If everyone feels comfortable, they're so welcome to. It would make a really interesting conversation to hear. Maybe if um, <coughs> I'm happy to put mine in the chat box. <laughs> Okay, there's Anna's balance, commitment, honesty, relationships. Mine are inspiration, making a difference, passion, and loyalty. Francisco, he's got 12 so long. <laughs> okay, accountability. Okay, so narrow them down, Francisco. Narrow them down. Does anybody else want to share these? I think it's so nice when, um, you know, when I did this in a group exercise, we shared ours which really made us understand each other better. Lena, acceptance, appreciate balance and caring. That's interesting. Dominique, achieve, challenge, quality, stability and calmness. Hmm. Amazing. Oh, I like those. <laughs> Quality, quality stability and calmness. Love, ambition. Beautiful. Wow. Health ambition. Nice. That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Francisco still is on 20. That's caring, okay. Let's okay. yes, help Francisco. So, Francisco, if you go caring, compassion, consistency, dedication, empathy, can you split those into similar groups? So, just take those that you have there. And then, so for example, loyalty will go with uh, maybe with family or I don't want to put ideas in your head, but kind of group the ones that are similar to you into two separate groups, if that makes sense. So you've got two columns going with these values. Like Does that caring, help? compassion and dedication, I would put together. Correct. Right? Yes. Thank you. Perfect. And then I would put um, family, personal development, loyalty together, maybe. 
And then I would put quality and performance would go together. Yes, quality and performance, empathy, enthusiasm. Maybe all of those actually. Yeah. So, and there's no right or wrong there. So don't feel like you have to do it that way either. Uh, it's just sort of like, again, Marisa's core values and my core values are governing how we group that. So mm. once you group them Great. into what you, that's all right, that your interpretation was perfect for you. And so my interpretation would be perfect for me. And so Francisco's will be for her, but at least now she has an example. So um, once you've for done him. that. For him, he's a boy. So sorry, friends. <laughs> All right. So then um, what you do is you, you choose one, right? From, <laughs> thank you, Francisco. Um, you choose one from the groups. So in each group, so we've got love, family, growth, proactive, kindness, and fun. All right, perfect. I think everyone's rested with this enough. Yep. You all understand the, the principle of that. Now, um, we need to think critically, right? So why? Because it helps us to make decisions. It enhances problem solving, um, your ability to solve problems. It refines your research skills. It polishes your creativity and it stimulates your curiosity. So you've got to ask questions. That's how we think critically. So um, we think critically about failure to harness the lesson and to move forward. Um, how you do that, this is a great little slide. You may also want to laminate for your team or for yourself. And it shows you the steps. We explore other points of view. This is a good activity if your team has something that they're working through. Maybe they're trying to figure out a new treatment or maybe they are trying to figure out a new protocol or whatever the case may be. And you can look at what are, what are other people doing? What is the industry doing? Uh, formulate the right questions. And we'll look at the questions in a second. Now gather all that information together, analyze it, and then consider the options. How can we tweak this or um, innovate this and apply it differently? So must the lamp stand up or can it be upside down? You know, look at um, new innovative ways to use things. So what questions are we asking? We're asking things like who, who does this affect? Um, who benefits or suffers? Who should be consulted? And once you have your answer, you can take that further if you like, but usually in that first set of answers, you'll be able to formulate a strategy and that's your roadmap to success. That's how you're going to get there. So you decide on what the goal is. You, you know, you get all your resources together and you ask these questions and um, you may want to take a screenshot of this, or as I say, you can get the presentation from Marisa laminated and just um, sit down with your team and do this activity. It will open up a whole new world for them. Um, being able to understand, imagine being uh, doing a facial and you're thinking this way. So um, who does this affect? Who's going to benefit from this? Um, who should be consulted here? And then what? What are the strengths or weaknesses of this particular product or treatment? What are the obstacles or alternatives? So it really does help to develop your team's critical thinking abilities as well. And then, of course, to come up with win-win solutions. So if you're facing that problem, um, maybe you want to expand to a new premises and you're not sure which premises, what part of town. Um, perhaps you want to build a great big spa somewhere and you're trying to think through the process. This is a great skill to have. Everyone okay to move on? Yes, love it. All right. so we've got critical thinking, then strategic thinking is how we apply the information we got through the critical thinking process. Um, critical thinking also helps. It's really great when you're dealing with any kind of conflict situation because you know when it kind of becomes a situation where, oh, but so-and-so said this and then so-and-so said that and it becomes this headache to sort out. If you ask those how, who, what, why, where questions, there's no way somebody's going to pull the wool over your eyes because you'll have the facts. You'll be able to sit down and figure out a strategy for everybody to resolve their conflict. Then uh, once you have your strategy, you might want to think of things that you can put in place to prevent the situation from happening again. Or if you've learned from a previous failure, sort of risk mitigation that you can bring into your business. Like what can I do to prevent that failure from happening again? 
So um, we think then critically, strategically, creatively. You may have heard of the term divergent thinking. I think it sounds really cool to be a divergent thinker. It's a new word for an entrepreneur, okay? We think outside the box, we think differently, we see the world differently, and we bring those creative ideas to the table. So thinking critically is key to solve a number of problems. We spoke about um, intelligence, emotional um, you know, awareness, and then the cultural aspects of everything. And critical thinking helps you encompass all those aspects. So if you're thinking about those three cues, while you're going through your critical thinking, you're going to develop a much more holistic idea of where things can improve, um, what risk to avoid, and then how to come up with solutions. So unpacking the failure. Here's the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So we've got to consider the shortcoming under the three categories, knowledge, emotions, and culture. Was there a lack of knowledge? Was there poor emotional awareness? Was there an ignorance of cultural climate? Remember what we mean by cultural climate is not your heritage culture. It could be, but in this context, it's talking about your business culture, your values, your essence that you use, that your business uses, that is your um, cultural intelligence, your awareness of the next person's boundaries um, and, and all those intricacies, okay? So um, what is the impact of missing the mark? So who did we offend? Were we offended ourselves? Who should we forgive? Should we forgive ourselves? And who has been affected by the event? What can you do to repair, reconcile, or get back on track? And I'm a great believer in conversation. I think communication is so important. Um, and then to think about how can you hedge against these failures in future. Accepting responsibility does not mean that you need to own failure throughout, okay? So if you're busy on a project or um, in a transaction and something goes wrong, you kind of get, sometimes one would feel prone to fall on the sword and just take all the blame and go, oh, you know, I'm so sorry, I'm such a failure. There's that false belief again. No, there were different elements and things that were involved in the process that got it to the point where it was rotten. So don't you dare take the blame for everything. Identify which values you may have transgressed of somebody else. Apologize, fix it as best you can. Identify also how your values might not have been respected because you should love yourself that much and then forgive and move on. So we don't have these weights hanging around our ankles, right? So um, then once we've accepted responsibility and you know we've apologized, we've forgiven, we've thrown it down, we need to set boundaries and continue the journey. This is also a great um, mind map to have if you wanna take a screenshot of that. It's a tri-quotient leadership. That's the three cues we were talking about. So the I cues. Now these values are not fixed. They are ones that I put in there. So you can go and take your values list and decide what's important to you about intelligence. What's important to you about emotion? What's important to you about culture? Um, and then how do we apply those things across relationships, projects, career development, business? And the whole secret here is that nobody's gonna feel motivated every day to do all these things. But once you have a plan, once you've got your strategy, once you've done your critical thinking, you've devised your plan, you can ask any good and successful business, business person. Sometimes it's just a matter of doing the thing you don't wanna do, but doing it every day and doing it consistently over time. And that brings your successful results and your win. So taking all that knowledge about the failure, about how you would do things differently. Trust me, your mind is filing that. You don't need to scratch through it. Your subconscious knows those things and you'll get a feeling in your gut. I don't feel right about this. Just sit down for five minutes before you make that business decision and think, which values are feeling gross about this? There's something that's not sitting right with my values. And I promise you that's what it is. When you get that feeling in your gut and you're like, oh, I don't know about this, trust it. Because something is threatening your value system. And if you, that's why it's important to know your values. Once you've got that, the world is your oyster. So um, here we go. Communicate well and lead with empathy. That's how we get through these things. Um, the, the huge financial companies that have had big 
um, issues with corruption and things like that. How do they take a team who's lost faith in the company and in the integrity of the company and then bring them back and go, we're still going to serve customers? I mean, the culture's broken unless there's somebody who's able to communicate well, hear what the people are saying, and get everybody back on board to carry on the journey. So leading with empathy involves forgiving, identifying the emotional wound, and separating the offense and the offender, getting clear on what contract to shed. What, what do I mean? What contract are we shredding? It's the contract where you had an assumption or an expectation from someone, but they didn't deliver on that. And that hurts and it doesn't feel great. So just shred that. Real forgiveness lets go of all expectations. And we need to move on from offense, not just forward with it. So um, we think about abundance and scarcity and we kind of go, well, we've all read this book, right? It's been around for like 100 years. No, not really 100 years. I don't know how long, but ever since I can remember, everyone's been talking about seven habits of highly effective people. Please pop in the chat if you've read the book, because I'll be honest, I haven't. All I did was look at the headlines of the book years ago and go, oh, these are good habits. I'll just do them. And so all compliments to the author of this book, um, those guidelines have actually been such a backbone in many decisions. Now, the one thing is abundance versus scarcity. There is more abundance in this universe than we can wrap our heads around. Just because somebody else is winning doesn't mean that we're losing. And just because somebody else is getting ahead doesn't mean that our turn won't come. So your strategy. We reflect on this now. We've thrown away, we've thrown down that failure. And we know that forgiveness doesn't heal the emotional wound. We know that we need to identify the value that was disrespected. We put boundaries in place. Things take time to heal if necessary. We communicate new boundaries verbally and through actions. How, have you ever done that? You've had an argument with someone and then you kind of find yourself back in that same place again. And it's because that person hasn't heard or understood that there's now a boundary in place. So how we do that is through communication, tactful communication and with empathy and love and kindness. So we allow ourselves to experience all the stages of grief when we fail. Um, you know, this, the stages of grief are not unique to just you losing a loved one. If you lose a business, any big loss to you triggers this sort of cascade of emotions. And if you, um, get this presentation, there's a link you can click on. And it was so great because although we know there are five stages of grief, I won't go through them now, you can actually see the different emotions that are linked to each stage. And maybe you can identify, I certainly could, in which one of those stages of grief you're stuck. Because if we're stuck there, we're not moving forward. So we recognize and consider other parties' feelings and perspectives. We have constructive conversations around the issue at hand, and we reconcile relationships where, where possible. Because forgiveness is a decision, it's not a feeling. The feeling we get, remember, is linked to our values. And so there are ways to communicate things. I'll teach you one more thing before I go. And that is by this fabulous author, Simon Sinek. I listened to all his TED Talks. He's amazing. Um, he's so inspiring. Marisa, have you heard of him? Yes. It's, I love him. He's awesome. Yes, he's so good. He's just so natural and wonderful. Brilliant. And, um, one thing he really said that kind of changed the way I communicate or package things when I communicate to people is he said, First, communicate how the thing made you feel, then the thing that they did and the impact it had. So, or even other way around, he doesn't mind. He, in fact, he says, switch it up if you want to, whatever suits the context. So, you know, when you broke my car, it made me feel that you didn't appreciate the things I've worked so hard for. So he teaches you how to package those conversations. It's really worth looking at. And it helps you to deliver a powerful message about how the action made you feel and what the impact was. And then the next step is to move forward from there, right? So move forward towards the goal. And that's how you win. Any questions? No questions from me. No I think it's awesome. Thank you for taking us through that exercise. I, I loved it. So maybe there are, does anybody want to unmute and ask or pop a question in the chat box?
I'm happy to see lots of people have read the seven habits of uh, highly effective people. <laughs> Fantastic. So um, yeah, in closing, I want to show you this and um, happy to, you know, distribute this um, if you want to take a screenshot, if that's the way you want to do it, or if you want to get a copy from Marisa. Um, what this is, it's discovering what motivates you and it's a great tool to use for your team. So very easy to use. On the right hand side, we've got a scale, deficit, scarcity, stable, prosperous and impact driven, and then abundant and influential. And this is called life mapping. So what do you use this for? This is to create incentives for your team. So if you have a team member who says to you, um, or even for your, your own use, right? So maybe we look at psychological well-being. Somebody wants to um, de personal development because that's sort of what the leadership coaches do, right? Is personal development. So psychological well-being, how I think, new thoughts. So rate yourself above the line or below the line for where you are now. So you ask your team to do this. If they rate themselves below the line, then obviously you know that's an area that they want to improve and you can formulate your incentive around that. But it also helps you understand the personality pattern um, and you know the way people think as well in terms of, um, sometimes we just don't understand why somebody's not getting where we can see their potential. And it's just a matter of sitting down and really understanding these 12 motivational pillars and where people are on the scale. So um, that is it from me. I hope you enjoyed the talk. And if you have any questions, I'm here. Sounds divine. Okay, so um, everyone, the, the presentation will be available as a download because as soon as we upload this recording to YouTube, we will um, make the presentation available as a download. Um, because then only people who want it go and download it, okay? I do have it already from Lucille, so thank you so, so much. Um, and yeah, Lucille, this was absolutely amazing. Um, something really different, especially when we're also focused on these hectic new business techniques and things like that. Um, this is so practical, so part of everyday life that we're going through. So thank you very, very much. There's all your messages. It was very- Thank you so much. I feel the love. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's so great. And it was amazing to be here. Thank you. And Lucille, I hope you feel better. And once again, go and have a good night's rest. And um, thank you so much for, for everything you share share with us thank you i i think the whole industry is just so lucky to have um marisa and all her wonderful platforms that she gives us so thank you and your team bye it's everyone okay. thank you for your time i'm um glad to have met you and thanks for sharing in depth super bye cheers everybody ciao ciao see you soon